Welcome to Electra Online and now let's take a look at Ampere, Ampere's law but without any symmetry. So what we've done in our first example here, instead of having the current at the very center of the circle, the path that we're going to take to integrate around, um, then you can see if we do that, the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the path, a small line segment on the path, it's not always in the same direction. Notice in this case, right at this location right there, you can see that the B field, because again, you take it coming in the direction of the current, and your fingers curl in the direction of the B field, so from there to there, the perpendicular direction is going to be the direction of the B field, the magnetic field, and you can see that both the line segment and the magnetic field are in the same direction, so B dot DL would be B times DL times the cosine of the angle between them. So let's go ahead and write that down. So the dot product of the magnetic field in the line segment is going to be the magnitude of the B field, the length of the small little segment, and that's not a very good way of writing that, let's put that again, so that's DL, times the cosine of the angle between them, and in this case, at this very location, the angle is zero, and of course the cosine of zero is equal to one. But a little bit further along the path, as we're integrating, you can see that the magnetic field is going to be perpendicular to the line from where the current is, directly to the edge of that circle, you can see that the magnetic field is this way and the line segment is this way. Then further back over here, you can see they're both in the same direction again. Over here, you can see that the magnetic field is this way and the line segment is that way. So you can see that the angle is constantly going to change as we integrate around it. That's not a good situation. Mathematically, we can probably figure out how to do that, but it would be very complicated. So Ampere's law even though it works, this is still correct if we can somehow integrate all the way around the circle and account for the angle being different all the way around as we integrate the line integral of the magnetic field multiplied times the line segment and adjusting for the angle constantly as we integrate around will always be equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed by that line integral. But again, when you do this, when there's no symmetry, it's going to be a very difficult problem to do and not recommended. You want to go ahead and take the current right at the center so that everything is perfectly symmetric like we saw in the previous example and then the integral is just a singe. Here to further illustrate this concept, let's say that we don't even want to take a circular path, we just want to take a random path that always changes direction all the way around as long as it's an enclosed loop. That's what this integral sign means. It has to be a closed loop integral if we go all the way around and realizing that sometimes the direction of the line segment and direction of the magnetic field will be the same, but most of the time they'll be in different directions and you just have to constantly account for that angle between them. Again, B dot DL is equal to B times DL times the cosine of the angle between them. And so you would integrate all the way around constantly adjusting for the angle. But again, if you do a complete line integral on any path, any path, no matter what the shape of it is, if it's a closed loop path around any current, the integral, the line integral, the complete line integral, b dot dl, will always be equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed by that path. So it's a, it's a great uh, theory, it really works, it's, it's, we can now call it a law because we know that it works every single time, but I would not recommend attempting such an integral because it really doesn't make any sense and it would be a whole lot easier just to go ahead and arrange everything in such a way that it's perfectly symmetrical and it's a lot easier to implement Ampere's law. So in the next several videos, we'll show you some really good examples of, of how you can uh, implement Ampere's law to solve some really good problems. So stay tuned if you're interested.